my name is Josh Weed. I'm located in the, the Washington, D.C. area in Northern Virginia, a little uh, place called McLean, Virginia. And uh, my occupation, I'm a full-time investor now, uh, partly in real estate, but uh, most more, more uh, into private ventures. So I work with a, a, a veteran-focused venture capital group, uh, and then I'm a private investor myself. And then real estate is a part of that portfolio as well. And um, as far as Ashcroft, I am... Uh, I'm in the, the value fund or the value add fund that was started last year. So I think that's an eight deals. Uh, I've not done any individual deals through Ashcroft, uh, but I have done about nine other syndications through other syndication groups. So not my, not my first rodeo in the real estate area. I started in real estate, much like probably a lot of, uh, real estate investors with, um, with single family homes. Um, and realize that that's not the way, uh, that's very laborious and um, uh, a lot, very, it's more active, it's not passive investing. And so uh, came, came around to um, more passively investing as an LP in apartment deals because it had sort of everything I was looking for in investment, uh, namely cash flow, the opportunity for equity appreciation and uh, the benefits of, you know, tax benefits of, of depreciation. So as an investor, I could get all those benefits without having to actively manage deals. And to somewhat uh, like a, probably a lot of investors, I have more, I have more money than time uh, as far as how I allocate my resources to this, this uh, real estate effort. And so being able to write a check with someone who I trust and then get all the benefits of being a real estate investor was was pretty attractive to me. It was the first fund that I had invested in. I mean, I, I obviously invest in um, other funds, mutual funds and uh, other like venture funds, but it was the first real estate fund that I had in, invested in. And uh, I, had, I had not, truthfully, I hadn't even heard of uh, real estate funds other than sort of REITs, uh, on, you know, publicly traded REITs. And so uh, I'd done several syndications as an LP on individual deals, but they were kind of smart, smaller GP groups. And the part that, it, that really attracted me to Ashcroft was the idea of being able to get exposure to multiple markets and multiple deals and um, sort of uh, make the return more predictable so, such that it wasn't wasn't tied to one individual asset or the you know the fundamentals in one market or one you know management group. Um, it would expose me to areas of the country that were growing, high growth markets uh, that had you know that were you know good good transactions. But I'd be exposed to six, seven, and then I think you know I think it ended up being eight or nine deals in the fund. And so um, you know I'm a statistician by trade, and there was a great slide I think you guys had in your. Uh, investor deck at the time, sort of why would you invest in a fund? And it showed this, you know, curve of potential returns. And basically, as you add more assets to it, the, you know, the variability draws in. And so for for this particular investment, for me, that was important. Um, you know, I wasn't necessarily going to hit a home run. Uh, you know, if you're in a certain deal that hits it, you know, hits it great. We've all been part of deals that deliver a 35 or 40 percent IRR, and we're really happy with that. Um, but I was looking for exposure and multifamily that would generate, you know, better than market returns, but a much more predictable uh, return profile. And I think the, the value add fund uh, provided that. And Ashcroft was the only one that at least I was exposed to doing that. The biggest hurdle, if it, rather than call it an objection, maybe just the biggest hurdle to, to really any investor who has not done private placements is kind of understanding how that works what it means to be a limited partner uh lose you know a little loot giving up a little bit of control but also gaining sort of the, the the passive nature of the investment and so um you know for me it wasn't necessarily with the ashcroft deal but as i started getting into syndications in general and becoming a limited partner the biggest hurdle is just making sure you understand what it means to be a limited partner and you know, read or have your lawyer or someone uh, you know smart to read that PPM to make sure you understand the terms of the investment. And so, uh, I, I'm fortunate that I had done a lot of. I'm not a lawyer, but done a lot of contract uh, activity in my in my W two job. 
And so, you know, those PPMs were not uh, overwhelming to me. Uh, so, you know, after going through that and talking to Ashcroft's uh, investor relations group, I was satisfied that, you know, my my asset or my investment would be protected. And so once that hurdle was cleared, it, you know, it was easy to, easier to write the check. Um, and so I think for other investors, that's just the main thing. It's making sure you're comfortable with what it means to be a limited partner. And if you're not right away, then talk to other people that are in there, listen to investor testimonials um, so that you can get yourself comfortable because I, I do think it's a powerful way to invest in real estate. And my experience has been really positive so far. So it's it's coming up on a year since uh, I joined as an LP in the fund. I think it was Q1 of, of last year. So we're uh, coming up on 12 months. Um, it's been a great experience. I think the investor communications is uh, really top notch. I mean, I think, uh, um, you know, the the recurring updates uh, have been very timely whenever you've had a deal that's been adding to the fund. Um, and then the investor updates that come out that, you know, talk about occupancy and, and how the assets are performing um, have been very professional and timely. So uh, it's one of the reasons I invested in Ashcroft was the sort of the larger more professional uh, aspect of it. Um, and so, yeah, I've been happy with that. Your investment thesis aligned really well with mine. Um, uh, I'd spent I spent the last six years in Houston, Texas. I just moved to the DC area about two years ago. Um, I think the investment thesis about high growth markets is is aligned with mine. I, you know, you, you guys are heavily exposed to Dallas Metroplex. I think that's where Joe's at and some of the other team. And uh, so you had a good presence there. You had some assets in that area. You, um, you know, your fund was targeting, you know, a few metro areas in a few states. And uh, Texas was one, you know, Georgia and specifically the Atlanta Metroplex, uh, Florida. Uh, I was really, you know, I was just really well aligned with that as a, as a great opportunity for growth. I mean, a lot of people are moving there. Um, you know, the high, uh, high income and a high uh, average household income in those areas. Um, and I think those demographics, while they've, you know, sort of accelerated uh, the last few years, I think are just going to continue to accelerate given what's going on in our country. And so I, I really like that aspect of the fund. Um, and so as you found, you know, good deals in those markets, uh, that was aligned with where I, uh, where I wanted to invest. I have recommended you to some of my friends in my other investor circles. Um, and I think the, the biggest one is a, a professionalism that does not exist everywhere. I think that's your biggest uh, comparative advantage. I think, um, you know, part of that comes with, with Joe Fairless, who's obviously, a, um, you know, the name of names in our, in this area. Um, He's been out there, uh, you know, for a long time and his podcast is, uh, is well listened to. I mean, that's how I actually first got introduced to Ashcroft was, uh, I'm a regular listener to his, um, to his podcast and sort of his, his universe. And, um, and that was the first in entry point to it. So I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of folks out there in the multifamily and apartment syndication area. Now, a lot of groups have spawned up with how hot the market's been over the last three or four years. And so, um, you know, having a, a name like Ashcroft and sort of the size and professionalism, I mean, it's a it's an institutional quality investment. Um, and I think that's a that's the main benefit is that um, you guys are, you know, large organization, you're professionally run. Uh, you have vertically integrated your, you know, your property management group uh, and your your deal finding and acquisition, and that's not that's not typical. I mean, there are other folks out there that do what you do, but I would say that the 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 vast majority of multifamily syndication groups uh, that are that are out there now are, you know, a little mom and pop ish, uh, and and it really. Um, it, the returns are really dependent on finding the right deal and structuring the deal properly and a little bit uh, a market dependent, whereas the more institutional assets that are being bought through Ashcroft uh, have a return profile, um, you, you know, that's that's more stable uh, and more poised to uh, be able to weather any type of, um, you know, financial future that could that we could see.
being in the fund, we have not gone full cycle on uh, any deals yet. So, um, so it's it's a little hard to say, um, you know, what that IRR specifically is going to be. I mean, I think the target IRRs are are pretty attractive. You know, high teens. A lot of the a lot of the deals that have been exited are even in the low twenty, you know, twenty to twenty four percent range, which uh, which is a pretty attractive, uh, you know, return. Um, I think the most the benefit that I've that I've uh, incurred so far is I think you know the the stability of the distribution is really nice and so you know one of the I think one of the goals of, of real estate investing and specifically multifamily is the idea of steady cash flow and so one thing that Ashcroft does that a lot of my other syndication groups do do not do is monthly distributions and so most of my other groups do quarterly distributions and Ashcrofts are monthly and um, that's uh, that's awesome. I mean, you know, talk about uh, predictable, steady returns. You know exactly. I mean, every first of every month, you know that that check shows up or, or that ACH shows up. Uh, so that I think that's the biggest benefit so far is just the stability of it. Uh, I think the other part is there's obviously appreciation in these deals now. I mean, you can see the, the thesis of the fund is value add, and as you look at what the fund, you know, the asset that the fund bought and then how even just in a few short months, you know, within six months in most of these assets of ownership, uh, you know, occupancy is up um, and the renovations have started on units to the point where you see, you know, rent appreciation and other things. So that's value creation and action. So even if we haven't had an exit, uh, we know that there's value being created in those assets. And that's, that's, uh, that's uh, wonderful to see as an investor. I originally put in an initial investment at the start of the fund, and then I reinvested this fall because um, I was happy with the first six months as being investor, like the like the assets you guys were picking up, and uh, you know obviously enjoyed the the distributions, and so uh, I could I could tell that the, the the first fund was getting ready to wind down. Um, you know that, that I think you had purchased the fifth or sixth asset. Um, and we're on the way to sort of closing the fund in the, I don't know, I think we closed it in December, but I think in November, I decided to double my investment. So, um, so yeah, I was happy. Uh, I think uh, it, it definitely checked the boxes of exactly what I was looking for. Um, and there were no hiccups along that journey. So, so yeah, I've invested before, or I, I've reinvested already. Um, and, uh, and I'm sure I'll look at, you know, Ashcroft in the future. I know there's a I think a second value add fund that's being created next year and I'll, I'll certainly take a hard look at that.